What's up guys, Luke here from Luke's Points and Miles. And if you are wondering what happened to my head, I did get a really bad haircut yesterday and I had to immediately go to a different haircut place to get it fixed. And the only way to fix it was to cut it really, really short. So that's why I look like I'm in boot camp, or I look like the oldest guy in boot camp. Thanks for tuning in today. Today I have an episode. We are going to go over cashback or points and miles. Which is better for you? What are the benefits and what are the cons of each? So if it's your first time viewing, we talk about credit cards, points, miles, travel, and cash back. If you're into that sort of thing, please hit the subscribe button. We try to put out videos at least twice weekly. This is gonna be a little bit on the basic side, but if you're like me, I like to review my basics to kind of stay up on my financial choices and which credit cards I'm using. So like I said, today we are going to talk about cash back versus points and miles. And guys, if you get any value at all out of this video, please hit the like button. It will help with the YouTube algorithm and it will help me push this video out to people who may need it, especially the beginners. Let's talk about team cash back. Almost everyone at some point has been team cash back. And let's talk about some of the reasons why. Cashback is a very simple reward system. You use your credit cards for everyday spend and you accumulate cash back. When this cash back turns into a sufficient sum, you spend it on something nice. Very simple, very effective. If you're not doing this, you really, really should. So simplicity, team cash back all the way. There are lots of ways to get great value out of simple cash back cards. The other good thing about Team Cashback is a lot of your cashback cards either have no annual fee or a very low annual fee. We will focus on the fact that they have several no annual fee cards. And a lot of those no annual fee cards will actually have several 5% cashback categories. And there are tons of options. Those are all really good things and those are all really good reasons to be on cashback. The next obvious advantage of being on team cash back is cash is king cash is the most versatile currency in the world you can spend it on anything there are several fintech and credit card partnerships in which you can transfer your cash back directly into a brokerage account great idea if you ask me especially if you're not in need of that cash so those are some reasons why you would be on team cash back and it's safe to say most of us start out on Team Cashback. It's a very simple process. And I think a lot of people, once they get to know that process, that's when they kind of get into the game. So most of us do start out with Team Cashback. Now, what are the cons of Team Cashback as opposed to being in the points and miles game? Well, one con is there are not a lot of extra perks on your cashback cards. You're not going to see cashback cards that will give you certain travel benefits, such as status boosting or airport lounges. Most of your cashback cards are pretty straightforward. You may see some with cell phone protection or something like that. But as far as travel benefits and life experience benefits, you're probably not going to see a lot of those on your cashback setups. The other con is a cashback setup will have a set value. If you are earning 2% cashback on your credit cards, then that is the value you would get. It will always be 2% as opposed to a point or mile, which can really vary in value depending on what it's used for. Another con for team cashback is a lot of these really awesome 5% cashback cards they may have limits on the rewards you can earn. A lot of 5% cashback cards may have a $1,500 maximum spend per quarter. And if you're a high spender, that might not work out really well for you. And finally, cons of team cashback. The cashback credit cards generally have an inferior signup bonus. Now, obviously a no annual fee card with a $200 signup bonus is a free $200. But when we compare them with the points and miles cards, they are definitely going to be an inferior value. So let's move over to the points and miles team. What are some pros and cons of using your credit cards to earn different points and miles currencies? Well, the biggest thing on the top of the list should be the signup bonuses. 
A lot of travel cards and cards that earn points and miles have insane sign up bonuses. Right now I'm working on a sign up bonus of 150,000 membership rewards points. And that is the American Express Business Platinum card. It is not uncommon to see 100,000 points or 100,000 miles bonuses on these travel cards. So the initial receiving the card, you have the potential to earn a outsized value and earn quite a bit more than most of your cashback cards. And that brings us to our next pro. When you are earning points and miles, you have a lot more potential for an outsized value. And what I mean by that is, you could book a flight that would normally cost you $1,000 cash. You could book something like that for a substantially lower amount of points and miles. Now, the reverse is true. Sometimes those values won't be beneficial, but it gives you the option. Team points and miles are going to have a lot more potential for once in a lifetime experiences. Uh, taking your family to Hawaii or Bora Bora or flying first class to the Maldives. Those are gonna be much more difficult if you're using cash from your cash back cards, but those are not at all difficult if you want to form a strategy to collect points and miles. And the most obvious benefit of points and miles cards are the travel perks. And these are going to be for people who travel a lot. Airport lounges, hotel statuses, airline statuses, free nights, uh, TSA pre-check, the list goes on and on. If you want to be team points and miles, you have the possibility to have a lot of different travel perks that will really change the way you travel. So a lot of benefits, however, there are some cons. What are some cons about focusing on points and miles instead of cash back? This is the big thing for me. Most travel cards and most cards that earn points and miles, they come with annual fees. Sometimes they come with fairly premium annual fees like the American Express Platinum car that is now $695 a year. You have to really do some work to find value in a card that costs $700 a year. And that brings me to my final con of the points and miles game. It's a lot more work. You're talking about cards that offer several different benefits. You have to make sure you find value in those benefits, and then you have to make sure you're utilizing them for that annual fee to make sense. It is a lot more work. I personally think it's a lot more beneficial, but I also understand someone who's not interested in doing that work, someone who's not interested in calculating the value of each point and mile you know, compared to cash, or someone who is not interested in learning the, the airline programs of seven or eight different travel partners. I can completely understand that. So there's not a clear winner on which is the best, cash back or points and miles. It's really gonna be up to the user. Some people that cash back may favor are people that don't travel a lot. If you are not interested in that aspirational trip to Iceland to see the volcano erupt, you know there's definitely no reason for you to have a points and miles card. If you want simple calculations and a very simple system to run, whether that be to start out or if you've already been in the game and you're looking for something very simple and low maintenance, cashback's probably gonna be for you. Also, if you're someone who's not interested in paying credit card companies annual fees, you're gonna to wanna to be team cashback. Also, if you are a part-time economy traveler and you're not interested in airport lounges and you're not interested in status, and you are someone who takes the wife to Myrtle Beach once a year, you are probably going to benefit from a cashback system. Finally, if you are someone just starting out, I would always recommend someone start out with a no annual fee cashback card that helps you learn the system and helps you learn the benefits of using credit cards in general and being in the rewards game. Who are some people who may benefit more from a points and miles rewarding card? Well, Folks that want to travel a lot and folks that want to experience outsized value or once in a lifetime destinations. Like I said, if you want to go to Seoul, Korea for five days just on a whim, you are definitely going to be able to do something like that if you're using credit cards that generate points and miles. If you want to go to the World Cup, I think it's in Qatar next time. If you want to go to Qatar for the World Cup, it's gonna be much easier to get there on points and miles. Who else are points and miles for? Luxury travelers. 
it will be very hard for someone like me to pay the premium for first or business class international travel. I don't think I could ever pay cash money for that. It's just not my budget. However, it's fairly easy for me to generate points or miles that can pay for something like that. And finally, people who will benefit from points and miles are those that genuinely enjoy the game. People who love finding deals and traveling often, and they love to essentially find this great value. For instance, tomorrow I'm flying to Dubai on Qatar Airways in business class Q suites, and I paid $82 cash. I used American Airlines points that I got from a sign up bonus on two credit cards. Those are the kind of experiences you can get when using points and miles cards that otherwise aren't available for a cashback setup. Now, there's nothing that says you have to be either or. My personal setup is very travel heavy and I even have more than my share of premium travel cards. I do get value from those cards and I evaluate them quarterly and yearly to make sure they still make sense. But I also have a very good cash back setup that gets rotated in very often. I have a couple different cash back cards that give me 5% cash back on categories I wouldn't otherwise have bonuses for. And I'm not going to earn one mile or one point when I can earn 5% cash back. And there are a lot of cards like that. So my recommendation would be to start out with a cash back credit card, focus on a cash back setup, at least in the short term. And if you are interested in travel and getting outside value, I would start working those travel cards in there. I wouldn't suggest you jump right in and get the most premium travel card ever. I don't think it's a bad idea. I just wouldn't recommend it. In the comments below guys, Let's hear it. Are you team cashback or team points and miles? Speaking of cashback, we do have a link to Rakuten, which is a cashback shopping portal. We have a link below. If you use it, you'll get $30 cashback on your very first purchase. The channel will benefit and I will greatly appreciate it. Again, guys, if you found any value in this video at all, please hit the like button and subscribe. And if you have stayed all the way to the end, thank you.